I'm Sarah Stewart from Peach, um, the People's Empowerment Alliance of Custom House. The E is very important to us. Um, so, we decided we were going to do an alternative regeneration plan. I'll give you a bit more details a bit later, but we did it quite honestly in response to the council's master plan, which was a fantastic piece of work. Pages and pages of lovely drawings of what the new custom house would look like, and it was absolutely bananas. So, when we looked at the, the council's master plan, um, they decided that they were going to take out whole streets in Custom House. It's quite a big development they want to do. Um, and they were going to take off people's homes, demolish them, and put in a new river. So, probably as we're situated on Royal Docks, more water was about the last thing that we needed. Um, so, it, they clearly hadn't consulted with anyone who lives in the area because they would know that we're on Royal Docks and we don't need any more rivers. Um, especially not if it's going to cost people their homes. So we thought that we could probably do better than that. So when Peach decided they were going to tackle this situation, they had to do some recruitment. They, were, they recruited six community organisers, of which I'm one, um, mostly locals uh, who were quite passionate about the area, and four architects, because obviously we need their expertise if we're going to produce our own plan of what we want to see in Custom House, it needs to be professionally done. So we have the professionals on board. Um, Peach taught all of us about self-interest, which is a, a key thing, a mantra that we learned from citizens, um, which is that people will do things but only if they're going to get something out of it. And it'd be really nice if we all got something out of it and we would found that there are mutual self-interest that um, we can work with. So we have a very positive approach, um, at least when Hero and Dan are around. So we try not to be mean to the council. And we try not to be mean about the mayor. Not when they're around. But the rest of the time, <laughs> um, because we're trying to build relationships with people, we want them on board, we want them to actually work with us rather than see us as the enemy. Um, the architects taught us a great deal. Um, the language of architecture is a splendid thing and most of us didn't understand a word of it so they are incredibly patient with us and they will translate for us whenever we need them um, but most importantly the need for a master plan if you're going to regenerate this much of an area you have to look at how it's going to affect the whole area and when you fail to do that you cause a lot of problems um, and we've already had that in custom house because here is normal custom house and then across the other side of the dlr tracks is the posh new bit next to the water where homes on this side are probably around the 300,000 mark and homes on that side are like a million. Um, so those people don't come over to our side and we don't go over there very often either. It's a real wrong side of the track situation. So we're not having that again with the rest of the regeneration plan. So we're looking at the whole area. Um, that's why we, had, we went door knocking on every street, not just the ones that are going to be pulled down. Um, but we do need a detailed focus plan of the area that we're really going to draw significant plans for to show the council how it should be done. And the, the architects have taught us that that is a possibility for us. Um, the organisers, because most of them are locals, we had a lot of knowledge about the history of the local area, which is pretty significant. Um, but also the problems of dealing with our local council, it's not the easiest brick wall to break down. Um, a lot of people are living in pretty shocking conditions. Um, a lot of our homes are kind of post-war, and the ones that were pre-war have all got subsidence, including mine, um, because the amount of bombs that Hitler dropped on it. And people were mostly worried about losing their support networks um, rather than the bricks and mortar, which is why we're not against regeneration, we just want to do it better. So what we came up with is the People's Master Plan, it's practical, it meets the needs of the people who actually live there. They should be the first ones to benefit. It's poignant because when you start speaking to people and you hear their stories about what they're going to lose and how it's going to affect them when this goes ahead, whatever happens, it's actually pretty moving. Um, and it's powerful because the people themselves have decided that we should do this and they've contributed to what we're going to do. They've told us what they want from open space to shops to homes to everything, schools, doctor surgery, pharmacy. They've Everything that they've suggested, we're going to try and incorporate into this detailed plan. Um, how we did it was we listened, we asked them questions and we listened to what they said. But we were quite um, <laughs> proactive on these things. 
So we got people on the doorstep and then we got we invited people to come to meetings and you know we fed them, we gave them silly games to play. Um, we went to different um, organisations that already exist in the area. Um, we even stood outside the school gates. When we had the adults in a meeting, we took the kids and got them to draw pictures for us and asked them what they want in the area, what would you like to see in the park, where would you like to play, that kind of thing. So they, there's very few people in Custom House that have escaped Peach. Um, then we educated them whether they liked it or not. So if I as an organiser have to learn about the master plan, then so do the people who are going to be subject to the master plan um, because basically they're supposed to be the ones who are helping to to formalise it and write it. So we gave them lots of opportunity, the architects explained to them what it would mean in practical terms. And then the people, um, basically, they got together their ideas and they put us to work. So they have decided that we should produce this plan and the area in which we're going to do the focus detailed plan to incorporate their ideas. Um, we're going to launch the plan um, to Ken Clark, who is the head of regeneration and obviously works for the mayor. Um, I think getting the opportunity to meet with this guy is actually pretty cool because, you know, as a lot of people working in the council, you kind of you know their name, but you never see them, you never meet them, you never speak to them. But he is meeting with us, um, and he will receive our alternative regeneration plan, and we will be expecting him to thoroughly absorb it because there will be questions and tests afterwards. We're not going to get everything we want, we've accepted that, so we're working out our priorities, we'll win some, we'll lose some, but as I say, the area's history is strong. This picture on your left is um, <laughs> our lot in the mid-19th century. Um, there was a, a situation there where the Toffs from West London used to come to East London to observe the poor. It was like being in a museum. So they would come around with their families and they'd look in your door and they'd go, oh, there's six of them living in there. Oh, they're all sharing a bed. And they, this was entertainment. They used to pay someone to come around and tour around the poor homes of East London. So East London, <clears throat> starting off by the dock workers who were really fed up at this stage, they all marched to West London where the Toffs looked out of their windows and laughed at the poor people with holes in their shoes. So we started a riot. So my suggestion was, <laughs> we have a precedent, let's riot! And I was so excited, I wanted my riot, but the rest of the people in Custom House are really nice, not like me, so they've decided to have a summer party instead. So you're all invited, 5th of August, be there, you never know, you might get a riot out of it. Um, it wasn't all plain sailing, as I've said before, some of our people are stubborn and awkward and annoying and these are some of the comments that we've had. Um, I can understand their disillusionment with the process. Um, they've all been annoyed and frustrated by the council in the past, so they don't rate our chances at certain stages in the process. But I think we've managed to turn around most of the most stubborn and the most, you know. There was one woman in particular that I avoided at all costs because she was so negative, I just couldn't bear to listen to her. And actually, I bumped into her in the street and she stood and talked to me and she was really nice and friendly. Whereas before, I won't tell you what she used to say to me because the language would be too blue in front of the baby. Um, but so we're getting there, we're winning, we're winning that war. Um, but it has been incredibly rewarding. I think every one of us, I've spoken to all the other team, the rest of the team, they've found it really powerful because we're getting these people involved and the methods that we're using were new to us. The one-to-ones and things like that were all new to us. But through getting people together, getting to know us first and then us getting them to know each other, has made a huge difference in how engaged the community are with us. Um, we've had some good successes, I have to say. It's, it's quite a list we're building up now. Um, not just getting repairs done, but also making sure they understand what's going on. We could knock on every door in one street and every household would give us different information about what regeneration was happening, when it was going to happen, what's going to happen to their home, where they're going to go, and they're all living in the same street. Um, so getting the right information out to everybody and I think also starting to change their ideas and giving them a bit more kind of pride and a bit more self-esteem that actually we are very powerful. No matter how big you think Newham Council is or how important you think the Mayor is, they work for us and there's more of us than there are of them. So, you know, we do have the power to change things. Um, we're becoming more powerful because we're getting more people on board, you know. Um, there's so many people now that have heard of Peach that I can tell people I work for Peach and they're like, oh, 
<laughs> you know, because they've heard of us and they know what, we're, what we stand for. Um, social media campaigns and things like that have been really successful, but the biggest thing is building links with others that can, I mean, that, the social media campaign was ridiculous. I mean, it kind of exploded before, beyond anything that we knew about. Um, but the, the fact is it's brought us to attention of people and now the council can't ignore us quite so easily because they recognise us as a very powerful group in the area. Um, so our big thing now is, what do we do next? We've got fantastic ideas, we're going to have spectacularly professional architecture plans that have been designed by the people of Custom House and if we want to make this happen, what do we do? Do we try and do a CLT for example? Um, it would be fantastic, but if we're going to do something like that, where do we get funding from? Um, you know, are there people that we can work with that have done it before? Are there people who are willing to support us in getting it off the ground? And as our council is such a one party and it's been there forever, um, it's not like we have to worry about we'll make a deal with this one and then they'll drop out of power and we'll have to re renegotiate. It's pretty much going to be the same people, believe me, until hell freezes over. So if we can get them on board and get them to make a few agreements, then, you know, it will be significant. It will be lasting. So that's the bit that we're kind of toying with and we're looking to do some extra work on now.